Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. First, let me say happy independence to all of you because we are launching season five here on holiday weekend here in Jamaica. It's independence, guys. Happy independence. Now, let me say thank you to all of you who have been supporting me. Your support have kept us going. And of course, guys, in season four, we literally went global. I couldn't have done it without all of you. You supported me all the way. But you know what, guys? I want to take the time out to just give God some praise. Because let me tell you something. God has placed a vision on the inside of me. And yes, I have done it scared for the most part. Um, I've been saying to persons that one of the things I've been doing is jump off a cliff <laughs> and literally um, saying to myself God well you choose you either give me wings or I'm gonna crash and burn but if we know God well we are not gonna crash and burn so of course guys you know what I tell you to do at this point in time if you're new here make sure you are subscribed to the channel you've hit the notification bell and guys I need some love over on Instagram because that's where I kind of do my talking and that kind of thing in the week so you need Uniquely Me TV, um, that's on Instagram and God's Daily Portion. You will find me over there on Instagram. But surely enough, YouTube has launched some things we call shorts and that kind of thing. And I'm trying to take advantage of them too. So make sure that you're showing me some love there. And guys, I want to know, of course, you know, which of the episodes have truly delighted you thus far. On another note, let me also say thank you to for those of you who contributed to our period poverty campaign. Guys, it was a success. You would have been seeing that I'm putting out um, snippets and videos of the handing over. Oh my God, you should see the look on the faces of those who are in receipt of these sanitary napkins. Guys, this is a real issue. Hopefully in this season, we are going to be covering this some more, you know, talking with some more women and the kind of thing to see you know the struggles they have gone through lastly guys you've been tuning in too on thursday nights for our woman entrepreneur or woman in business series guys i'm trying to make that as practical as realistic as i possibly can but of course go on over there you know um that's where all the information is on a thursday night here on youtube so here we are, season five. Can I tell you, I am super excited. And guys, we're starting this out off with a bang. So what is Uniquely Me all about? Uniquely Me is the place where we bring forth the stories of women, women who have been through trauma, women who are um who have transformed you know their experience have transformed them but we have not limited it to women um there are some men there are couples you've been seeing the the, the varying um guests and stuff and so today i have an interesting um guest coming up um many of you will know him um you probably know him as another gender but let me tell you something i am not going to burst a surprise i'm going to wait until we come back and that's when you'll see who the big reveal is for today. Stay tuned. Uniquely me is uniquely you. Balancing the different hats of life. Achieving all your goals in the name of rest. Uniquely me is uniquely you. You can do anything. With the hands on your chest, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. You are a winner. So guys, welcome back. I'm your girl, Simone Stewart, and this week we are looking on um, the whole matter, literally, of trauma and transformation. My guest is Ricardo Sims, but for a long time, he wasn't Ricardo Sims, and so I'm going to allow him to tell you more about it. Ricardo, welcome to Uniquely Me. Thank you for having me, Simone. 
It's so good to see you. Let me tell you, brother, listening, watching, following your journey has been so inspirational. And so I know a lot of persons, because we would have been putting out the trailer um, of who is coming up. So I know a lot of persons are very interesting, interested, I should say, in wanting to hear your story. So too am I. Um, how are you in your neck of the woods? How is COVID treating you? Well, COVID is good. You know, I don't really pay too much attention because... God got it, you know, so I don't really pay too much attention. I, I take the precaution to protect myself, but I'm not all caught up in it. It's not preventing me from living my life, anything. So it doesn't really affect me. Awesome. So, Ricardo, we're going to jump right into it. For a long time, and as I listen to your 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 interviews or your your sharing on youtube and on instagram for a long time you tr you you struggled with your identity can you share with us what when did all that start you know for me this starting started when i was about four years old like the first time i realized that i was um different or something was really different with me is when i went to what we call it in Jamaica, basic school. You know, mm -hmm. I, when I went to basic school the first time, I didn't understand why the girls dressed different from how I was dressed. And I remembered um, there was there was this little boy, a group of boy, and there was a group of girls who just rushed over to him. And I took, I think it was a fruit or some juice, and we, it's like the little girls touched him or hugged him or something. And I went ahead to do the same thing. And then that the teacher came and she slapped me on my hands. And I just couldn't understand why, you know? And that was the first time of me understanding that, why did she do that? But she didn't do it to the girls, you know? So that's when I first first figured out that something, something, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you talk a little bit, uh, well, I should say a lot about, you know, what was taking place on the inside of you. That first experience, um, not knowing necessarily what was taking place, begin to, I, I, I guess one would call it kind of self-discovery. Um, what, what was going through in your head? I mean, you recognize that, hey, you're a boy, you are born a boy, you had all the, the organs of a boy, but what was happening on the inside of your mind? Why were you not comfortable with the fact that you were a boy or are a boy, I should say? Um, it was just that I couldn't relate to guys. I just didn't, I didn't, I wasn't interested in anything that boys were, were doing. I didn't look masculine. I didn't, I didn't have the features or the, 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 the things. I didn't have the desire to do anything that I saw guys, boys were doing. I want, I didn't want to play with chalk. I didn't want it to get dirty. I didn't want to do any of these kind of stuff. You know, I just wanted, I just admired girls and I just felt inside internally that I was a female you know for a long time I felt that way and it's it's hard to explain because a person who has not lived that situation will just look and say what are you talking about you know but this happened since I was a child and 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 I, I can't tell you what was going on on the inside because nobody showed that to me nobody came and said you are a girl nobody said anything that came afterwards mm -hmm. you know but in the beginning of discovery it was just you just feel something on the inside and that's how you feel you know and that's what happened to me as a child growing up and then the trauma came after and other things happened into contributing me confirming to myself that yes I'm correct you know so yeah share with us Ricardo what are some of those things that began to happen that kind of swayed you even the more to thinking that you're a boy you're a girl okay it was like um they were telling me I'm a I'm, I'm a boy and I felt like a girl and um I just couldn't understand there was this man and nobody I've never spoke of this to anyone but like when I got to about age maybe 12 or something like that there was this man who would come by my home and he would wait for me every time when I was coming from school and he would just try to touch me you know we, he didn't he, he just tried to rub himself up on me all this time and every time and it wasn't so much of me thinking that why a grown man is doing that you or anything it was just that i'm confused um they say i'm a boy and man loves woman so why is it that this is a grown man and he likes 
doing things like this. So this, this means I'm not the only person. And it means that, okay, I didn't know what gay meant at that time or anything. I just still believe that because a man shows interest in me and people said to me or say, you look like a girl, you speak like a girl. My mom even wanted a girl child. So all those things that was spoken over me and all those action that was done to me confirmed to me and really made me believe that I'm actually a female. Mm. You know, I, I wonder, I wanted to bring your mom here in here, you know, at any point in time during those early years, did you voice it to her? Did you say anything to her or did she say anything to you that made you feel uncomfortable or kind of uh, um, increase the confusion in your mind? No, the one thing with my mom, she, I, I wish she was here to really for me to speak to her like this and explain to her because I know this my life and my whole situation I'm sure it would had to be a difficult thing for her but she never showed that to me and that's just so amazing you know and um yeah she didn't do anything to 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 to, to make me believe otherwise she just was a mother and she didn't really know how to express emotion well and um that's how it is you know and so i never got to share really who i am so she never got to see any of this yes she eventually figured out as i got older that okay this is whatever and she would tell me about god and stuff like that you know and i would just live my life because i'm like you don't even understand what i'm going through you know and i will get angry sometimes you know and sometimes i feel i feel so hurt right now for the anger that i i gave to her without not understanding that she don't even have the answers to give to me you know so that happened to me and um, yeah, but she was just a supportive mother who never, never abandoned me or anything. She was just like my rock. Yeah, yeah. I know that feeling. Um, my mom is not here too, so I can identify. But you know, Ricardo, something is going through my head um, that how does, you, so for me, and I'm sure for many watching will not understand what do you mean that, you know, you felt like a girl um, because what is it that boys do different from what girls would do? Is it that when you said you felt like a girl, is it that on the inside you felt that your body should be different and you should have long hair, you should have boobs? What was it? What was going through your mind? You know, how does the thinking of being a girl, what, 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 what is it? I, I didn't want anything to do with my body parts. I didn't care. I didn't want to look at it. I wasn't interested in it. I just didn't care about that. It made me feel like it, 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 it kind of made me very, very, very depressed as a child because I didn't really understand what was going on because I was just still confused. How is it? I'm feeling like this God, but why is it they're telling me otherwise? But why am I feeling like this? Why did you make me to have this voice? I don't understand God. I used to pray to him as a child. I used, I remember going on the top of my roof. And I will, I will stay there for hours trying to figure out what's going on, God. Like, there is too much, you know? And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, did I, at any point in time, so as to, you know, get rid of what was the confusion in your head, did you try having a girlfriend? Did you try doing stuff with girls like a boy should? Yeah, and that's, that's the sad part. That's how the devil works. And... I know God says we should love whatever that's one person I don't love and I hate him like Pison, you know, so and that's the only person I ever, ha I ever hated, you know, and that's that's because yes There was a time when there was this girl who I liked I don't know if I liked her Like I don't know if I liked her as a girlfriend, but I know I liked her. I like going to see her mm -hmm. But part of me going to see her was because I wanted to see another guy that was living next door to her so you see my whole entire life was just bombarded with confusion, you know? Here I am with this girl that everybody likes, and I think the girl likes me, and um, there comes her neighbor, which I don't understand. I just couldn't understand why I like him now, mm -hmm. you know? But I wasn't interested in the girl like that, but I, was, I, I liked her, but I don't know in what way I liked her. Mm -hmm. But because the guy who came liked her too, but he also liked me. So you see where that can be very much confusing, because again, a boy should love girl, and a girl should love boy. And if I'm a boy, according to the world, and I'm feeling like a girl inside, why is it still boys are attracted to me? Why did this heterosexual boy, who likes the girl that I probably like, likes me too, you know, see, it's just confusing, you know, so those things contributed to me really believing yeah. that I was a female. Yeah. So when did that first 
act of acceptance scheme where somebody else accepted you and you decided in your head, I am, I'm making a decision. This is who I am and this is where I'm going. Well, it, it wasn't because I was accepted by um, somebody. It was, it was like more so I got introduced to other people like me and then that's when I realized I'm okay because there's other people like me. Come on, I'm okay. God did this, you know, because look, there's somebody with my story. It was because for, for like all the way up until my 12, 4, 15, 16 years old, I didn't really know that something else, like other people like me existed, you know? So for me to find that, it was confirmation to me that yes, I'm okay. And, and this is true. I'm okay regardless, but this part is just not okay. Think, thinking of it now, you know? So, yeah. So you became what we call, or what you, you know, former bio, Kerry Glamour. How did Kerry Glamour got birthed? Well, to be honest, um, I don't know. I started off with a fake name because my name was Ricardo. So I was looking for a name that separated from, separated me completely from Ricardo. So I, I originally called myself Kevin, which wasn't, it wasn't, I started as Kevin. So when I met other people and they started to say, oh, you look so like a girl or you look pretty, whatever. And they started to do stuff like that. I said, it's not Kevin, it should be Carrie. You know, then it started to be Carrie. And then as, as I grew older into this community, um, I started to go to parties and um, started to hosting parties, you know, all this, my family had no clue off. You know, I was just living a whole complete separate life. And because I looked the way I looked and because I, 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 I love fashion and I bring fashion when I was bringing fashion to the, to, to the, to the community, people liked me, you know, so that name st stuck on me by that. That, was, that name was given to me based on because of how I looked and my fashion, you know, I always wanted to be put together. Yeah. 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 You spoke um, in your, one of your videos, about the fact that a number of persons whom you were surrounded by friends and that kind of thing who accepted, I guess, I guess there were persons of the same lifestyle started dying. Um, or is it that they died naturally? Or is it that the fact that we are a homophobic society here in Jamaica, um, they were being murdered? What happened? Because somehow, as I listened to you, it seemed to have been what scared you for want of a better word. Um, is that the case? What happened? What was taking place? Um, in Jamaica, um, I don't know how to say. I love my country, but we're just way behind time by understanding difference. And I'm not telling them that they should accept it, but understanding is two different things than accepting, you know? And for that reason, um, a lot of people who I, I knew before, like they passed away because of debt, you know? people murdered them and and that's sad you know and that, i i feel so lucky to be here and it has to be for a reason because there are people there are people that i was i was really close with who died and it was by like violence by murder you know they, they were murdered so oh. it was it was because of who they were yeah. why they were murdered it wasn't for any other reason so so here's a question i'm interjecting here so they were dying because of who they were did that at any point in time strike you that hey maybe what i'm doing here is really wrong did it strike you did it did it did it scare you um did it jolt you i mean did it convict you no that wouldn't be able to convict me because it doesn't matter who we are or what we do violence is not the answer so that was that didn't that didn't translate to the question you're asking me no none of, all it did was scared me for my life because i didn't want to die and that's all it did nothing else yeah what happens when your feminine products are designed by a female gynecologist they're designed to do more for you and your health Made with 100% cotton, Woman's Touch sanitary napkins were developed to give you the guarantee of incredible comfort and superb protection with rapid dry gel technology. Join the thousands of women who have switched to a healthier pad. Woman, powerful, pioneering, period. Get Woman's Touch, inspired by you.
available in retailers and wholesalers island wide. You are watching Uniquely Me Season 5, Episode 1, and my guest is Ricardo Sims. Many of you may have known him as Kerry Glamour, but he is back to being Ricardo Sims, and he's sharing his story of transformation. But we're digging in a little bit, you know, understanding what led to his trauma initially, initially, you know, and how that transformation process took place. So... So, Ricardo, here it is that you migrated, you went to France. Was life any different there or did life get more exciting? Well, to be honest, um, I don't know um, how, because it, that's when, when I migrated, like some months after my mother died and then my whole life come crashing down, you know? So whatever reason I came to France for was just up in the air, you know? It didn't, it didn't, nothing changed, nothing. I didn't do anything because I was just so so confused about why would this happen in a moment when I have decided to, you know what, I'm going to go abroad, do, I, I did this for my mother, you know, I wanted to go away to make a better situation in general, yeah. you know, to make her proud, you know, and then you just go and then your mom just died. You know, I kind of died with her, you know, so for a long time, for a long time, I, I have not been really being myself. I, I stunted my growth. I just, stuck like i just couldn't do anything because i didn't even get to go back to see her for the last time you know so that kind of hurt me so that kind of i gave up on a lot of things when that happened you know because i have so much talent in me i have so much things in me and i just suppressed them yeah. because i didn't care anymore you know so i won't i can't tell you like I, I won't say when I came to France, it was a big ex. No, it was, it, it was for the, it wasn't, it isn't, I'm being honest. It wasn't until, until I learned to say, you know what, listen, I'm not going to blame myself anymore and I'm going to live on this earth and never be who I'm supposed to be because you can just die. Yeah. That was the turning point in my life to actually led me to this decision of where I am now yeah. because my mom died. I just wanted to just, you know what? Let's go all the way in. No, no more being Ricardo and no more being um, Carrie sometimes because I was holding on to Ricardo for my mother. That was the reason. I don't understand why I was doing that, but that should have been enough answer answer to me. That was, should have been enough for me to understand that if you're if you're if you're feeling like that something is wrong because you shouldn't be thinking about your mother if you really believe that this is who you are, you know. But in that moment, you're not thinking like that, you know. Yeah. so that's what happened yeah so the transformation took form and i want you to walk us through what was that transformation like and i'm asking that and as i listened as you know as you said that when your mom died it kind of it kind of brought a reality that you know what i'm gonna live i had that same experience when my mom died um i always wanted to to explore having my own business because i've been i've been a banker forever <laughs> Um, but somehow, when my mom died, Ricardo, I seem to, it's, it's, it's as if I felt this new lease on life, that I was going to live life, I was going to, I was going to achieve what I needed to achieve. And I, I'm sure many others listening can identify. But for you, you decided that, listen, I'm going to go all in. Walk yeah. us through that all in process that it's, it's kind of a, what I call a reckless abandonment um, in that we're going to live this one life and we're going to live it. But how did you transition? There are changes that took place physically, emotionally. Walk us through what were some of those changes that took place? Okay. Um, in the beginning, what we you have to do, you have to do if you... you you know, a lot of people think gay and transgender and cross dresses and drag queen is the same thing. It's t it's totally different. When you're a transgender, you literally do a medical transition, you know, and um, that in that entails you taking hormone therapy replacement, you know, a hormone replacement therapy, and um, over time, being on those hormones, it change your um, physical appearance. And it does some things to your body, and that's what I did. And then after I did, um, I got you because you 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 go through puberty, puberty, puberty again. Mm -hmm. So you you grow you grow you grow breasts. You do everything as a teenage girl would, you know. Yeah. So I had to do that twice. I had um to go through puberty twice, 
and um when I grew breasts, um, it wasn't enough. So, you know, I did surgery and I got implants, you know, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I hope this is not too much, but did you also remove the male genitalia? Um, that part, I don't think. Okay. No. Okay. All right. It, you don't think as in you don't want to answer or what? Which one? <laughs> All right. Don't say nothing. <laughs> All right. So the transition, so Kerry was birthed and so life got on. But you stated again in your video that despite the fact that this new life, this new transformation took place, um, here came tragedy um, that almost took your life. Um, do you want to share with us what was that tragedy that almost took your life that basically brought you face to face with your mortality face-to-face -face with what you're doing, face-to-face -face with the fact that transformation needed to take place? What I will say is um, this recently happened like probably nine months ago, you know, so I won't be able to go in depth, but I will do my best to share what really happened, you know. Um, oh, okay, so um, it was more like I was just living my life. Everything was going perfect. I was now starting to see everything coming together. Now I was starting a business. Everything was just going where it's supposed to go, you know? And I felt like, wow, I'm finally having people that is coming in my life to help me, you know? And um, I don't know what happened, you know? Things just come crumbling down. Like there was just, I don't know how I got to the place I got, you know? I'm from Jamaica, I don't smoke marijuana, I don't do none of that. But it came a point in my life where I was smoking, smoking, you know, and um, just wanted to meet people. And I don't know what happened in my life where I wanted to like have people accept me and validate that I was really a woman. You know, I didn't really care much if the gay community understood me or anything, because to be honest, I, I love people in general, but I received a lot of hate for no reason in that community. So I, I really just kind of strayed away and said, you know what, I'm going to work with straight people, you know? So when I would find a guy or someone who is straight and they they accept me and don't make me feel like I'm not who I said I am, that would, you know, that would make me like say, okay, you're my friend or something. And I would just put you on this pedestal as if you're a good person to me when you're doing the bare minimum, you know? So for me, that was me lacking something in my life, you know, and I needed that. I needed someone to just validate what I feel, you know, because I just didn't understand where that feeling was coming from, you yeah. know, so I would just accept the bare minimum as as people in my life saying they're my friends when they're not, you know, they're not even influenced my life in a positive way. It was just always negative, mm -hmm. you know, so this is what I was surrounded by, you know, and I was surrounded by people and I couldn't even express to them how I feel and I couldn't I couldn't just be myself in how I really wanted to be. I couldn't, you know, and then. I start smoking, I start drinking, I start living up life in a way that I don't know how I got to that point. That's yeah. how the devil works. You just arrive there and you don't know how you got there. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just it was just a lot where I felt like depression started to come over my life and sadness and darkness and all kind of stuff. And I'm just asking myself, what's the point of this life? I don't understand it. God, I don't understand what's going on. Yeah. Even though I was living this life, I was still praying because like my mother before she died she gave me this bible as my gift mm -hmm. and i remember when i was coming to france i was going to throw it away because my luggage was overloaded and i was like no you can't do that as a bible and i brought it and in times when i was going through my darkest moments and um i go to that bible all the time but i wasn't going in the bible because you see a lot of people we don't know that we're supposed to go inside the bible we know we're supposed to just read the the surface the psalms that we were th taught and all these kind of stuff so that's what i was doing you know so nothing was happening really but god was listening god was really listening what was going on so all my pain I i've been hurt by friends close friends you know and i prayed this prior to god for two years consistently god please to open my eyes to the people who are around me please to oh, that's all i want i didn't want no money i didn't want nothing i prayed two years consistently yeah. for god to open my eyes to show me the people who i was surrounded i was surrounded by and that that exactly what he did so when he did that and the things i saw and it, it traumatized me almost lose my mind 
what God, I didn't really believe that these things really existed. What I, what I saw, you know, I'm still trying to put the pieces together and I'm still waiting on God to tell me you are not able to share this part of your story because I'm really obeyed, obedient to God. So I'm, I can't go in depth mm -hmm. of what really happened, but I just want people to understand this is not a joke. Mm -hmm. This is literally a real life situation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us, even when we're Christians, we can still be sleeping. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. And I was asleep, dead fast asleep, living in a world, trying to seek that validation from people. And I just accept the bare minimum in my life yeah. because I needed that validation and that acceptance from people. And that doesn't come from them because they don't have it to give to me. They're looking for it themselves. Oh, yeah. And they just use things in this world to, 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 to suppress that. Yeah. You know, I was once that person. So all these things I've been going through over my life and me doing all these Instagram and all these kind of things, it's me seeking validation from the world, yeah. not knowing in that moment, but that's what I'm, I was basically doing. Mm -hmm. And God showed all of that to me, you know, God showed all of that to me. So I was, I was more so of a person who was just curious about life. I wanted to know about debt. I was like, what is it? What happens after this? What happens to this? What? All of this, I was living my life so fearful at, at one point because I don't want to die. Yeah. It was like, I don't want to die. I can't die. I don't know what's going to happen, you know? And God showed me literally everything. And he knew I needed to see that. He knew I was able to manage it, but he also knows that I needed to see it in order to change. If yeah. I didn't see what I saw, it wouldn't be able, this wouldn't be here today. And in that moment, I was like, why God, why would you do this? You get it? But it is for, for the best. Mm -hmm. So when I'm here being transparent, it's not by my might, nor my power, but the spirit of God. I could never do something like this. It was all about me being first lady, Carrie Glamour, the beautiful person. I had an image that I had to live up to. A lot of people might not remember that, but I had an image. You know, there's a lot of things I was the first to do in my community and a lot of people like looked up to me and so god says listen all those people that looked up to you you're going to show them what they should be looking up to so this is why i'm able to be transparent mm -hmm. you know before i was private secretive you couldn't know nothing about me you just know that i'm carrie glamour and i look nice and i drive you don't know nothing else but mm -hmm. now look the whole world is looking at my life and they know everything about me now that's not because i want that it's because i have no choice based on what god showed me yeah 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 Thanks for sharing that. You know, you mentioned that, you know, the Lord showed you a lot of stuff. Is it that you had some personal experience? Were these things in the physical or were these things physical. in the spiritual? Okay, so let me explain. Um, a lot of people say, um, I don't know, I, I really don't know about it that much. I didn't really, uh, like, out-of-body experience. That's not what I had. I was in my body when all this was happening. But it was a spiritual awakening that happened to me. And God showed me every single thing. I couldn't believe my eyes. I couldn't believe these things was really happening. I could not believe, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people will not even understand what I'm saying. And that is OK. God says it's OK. The people who wants to hear will hear and who wants to listen will listen. Who doesn't will continue in their ways. And that is fine. It's not my responsibility mm -hmm. because it felt like I was responsible for a whole other thing. It's like, God, you're giving I can't do this, God. This is like when God asked Moses to go do what he had to do. Mm -hmm. It felt way more than that because I don't understand how I can go from being this person who lived for the world and was all about this to go now back in front of people to publicly detransition de and to sh God, what are you doing to me? But you see, mm -hmm. because I know what life is all about now and mm -hmm. because God has opened my eyes and I'm mm -hmm. so happy and privileged. Let me tell you, mm -hmm. I am happy and privileged that God has done this to me because if it wasn't for him, I would not have been here today. So I will be like a living, walking billboard for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So I don't care who I offend. I don't care who don't understand my story. I don't care who can judge me because what I want people to understand is I have seen it all. I have done it all. I have been through it all. Nothing you can do to surprise me, hurt me, do anything to me. The most you can do is to be nice. And that's all you can do. Yeah. Nothing else you can do to affect me. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. Remember, Uniquely Me is Uniquely You.